Good morning, thank you for joining us. It'll take a few seconds for people to pop on, so we'll get started in about 30 seconds. I'm actually going to put a question or, um, in the chat. So as you join, let us know where you're from and what your role is. You should find the chat there at the bottom of your screen. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome, thank you everyone for joining us to learn more about M-Class Texas Edition. My name is Mindy Jones and I am part of the Amplify Texas team and happy to have you join us today. Um, we, during our session, I know probably you will have some questions. So if you will look down there at the bottom of your screen, there's gonna be a Q&A box that you can ask any question that you have that comes up Go ahead and type it in so that you don't forget it whenever we have some time at the end and we will get to your questions. Our goal is to answer all the questions that you have for us today. So just type it there in the Q&A. Um, it just helps us keep track of your question and then we can respond right there on, online and on demand. We'll also have a few minutes at the end to try and respond and clear up any questions that we weren't able to answer for you in the Q&A. Um, I know one of the questions is gonna be, are we gonna get this recording? Absolutely, you're gonna get the recording, recording about 24 hours after we end the session today. So you will get the recording um, as well as some other documents that you will probably be interested in receiving as well. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn this over to Alan Stadmeyer. Alan? Hi everybody, um, thank you so much. I'm Alan Stadmeyer and uh, I work on the M-Class product team and I've spent a lot of time in Texas, uh, both before you heard about the fact that we're offering this for you for free, uh, as well as ever since. And I am so excited today to share with you uh, M-Class Texas Edition. To quickly introduce a few of the people who are with me, you've just met Mindy Jones. Um, I'm also joined, you could see on your screen, uh, Krista Curran, uh, who is the general manager of the M-Class uh, product line and our assessment and intervention business. Krista is going to be answering your questions. Um, uh, she is amazingly fast typist and on point. So please uh, get those questions coming. You'll look at the bottom of your uh, Zoom screen. You'll see that there's a chat box icon and a Q&A icon. Click on that Q&A icon starting right now. And it's like, think about a, telef a telethon. We are manning the phones. Just keep the questions in the Q&A box and introduce yourselves and chat about the lovely things that you're seeing and all your wows and wonders in the chat box and the questions in the Q&A box. I'd love to introduce Etty Howard, uh, who has been one of our PD facilitators from Texas, in Texas, introducing M-Class nationally, uh, and also over the years has become a wonderful friend and mentor of mine, uh, and Ray Rodriguez, uh, who is leading the work introducing all of M-Class uh, Texas Edition to you everywhere. So please, uh, that's our team today. I'm going to start sharing my screen and I'm excited to show you uh, what this all feels like. So first up, our plan is to talk a little bit high level about what M-Class Texas Edition is, uh, what is the free offering that we're providing you, and pe why people uh, come to us in Texas and elsewhere. We'll talk a little bit about the screening itself, uh, what's being covered in this, and how this will help you in your instruction, right? Because screening is only as relevant as instruction. Uh, we're gonna take a live look at M-Class itself, a video of what it feels like to screen, and we're gonna look in the product to be able to see, we're gonna, it's, everything is English and Spanish, but we're gonna look at the English classroom reports so that way you could see it. We'll pause and then um, talk about some additional classroom and instructional supports that you can add on to the free version of M-Class Texas Edition. Before we jump into this, I'd like to introduce you to our website, uh, amplify slash M-Class Texas. Mindy, if you could put that into the chat box for everybody, that would be great. This is your one stop of information just to quickly give you a sense, it tells you about everything I'm gonna show you today, 
lays out the broader vision of the M-Class comprehensive system as well, you may really want to get down the page all the way down to the FAQ, to the frequently asked questions. Throw Krista the questions today in your Q&A box, but whatever you forget to ask, it's probably been answered in the FAQ. All the way down, our hotline, email, any questions, or set up a demo for your district or to ask us more. But most importantly, I am so sure you're gonna love it this morning that you're gonna to wanna to sign up right away. Uh, you could do this today as you can sign up for our free edition or of course, more likely, you'll talk with the rest of your team. Uh, but here's where you come back to sign up. And again, your hotline for any questions. So as you know, by joining us, uh, M-Class Texas Edition is the free alternative diagnostic solution for kindergarten. Uh, you are making a choice for your kindergartners beginning of year as to whether you wanna use the University of Texas's Kia or M-Class. Either one is free to you. Either one is going to be able to do exactly what the um, TEA is expecting. Uh, it is like uh, Kia. It is beginning, middle, and end of year progress monitoring. We'll talk about all of this. And that's the B key choice that you're making, completely free as we're gonna talk about. We also have the opportunity, um, TA has granted us the opportunity to be approved to give away our first and second grade versions of M-Class Texas Edition for free as well. And we're gonna show you what's involved in that. Now, M-Class itself, does go K6 in English, K3 in Spanish. So you may want to think about additional grades, especially before the STAR assessment, but let's make sure that we understand um, um, our big picture here. Now we've been doing this work for about two decades. It's not new. If you look at the lower left-hand corner, we once upon a time had CPRI on a Palm Pilot. Uh, I actually had my dibbles on a Palm Pilot years ago. I wish I had saved it. Some of you may actually have seen those. Um, maybe they're in your attics. But uh, over the course of two decades, every time the Dibbles assessment has been updated, we've completely overhauled our software to new platforms, new functionality, new instructional tools, to today we actually have M-Class Texas Edition. We've served millions of students over these years, and right now, 1.3 million students across the country are being assessed with M-Class. In fact, just about 7% of all K-2 students in the country are being uh, done universal screening and progress monitoring with M-Class. So this is a proven technology, a proven assessment, and it's one that teachers find incredibly useful, and we're just thrilled to bring it to you. So why do districts come to us? You know, why are large districts, small districts, litter charter schools, urban, suburban, rural districts coming to us consistently? It's mainly because teachers have found that in an era of formative assessment, they're still cobbling together too many different tools. They use one thing for universal screening, something out, they do their progress monitoring or it takes too long. They're giving classroom assessments because they don't always trust the data. They do something else for instruction. M-Class is your one-stop tool. We provide universal screening, progress monitoring, and we meet all of the requirements of the Texas Dyslexia Screening Handbook, as I'll show you. These are part of the free M-Class Texas edition. In the same platform, in the same delivery system, if you want, if you are a balanced literacy district and you'd like a digital running record, M-Class has that as an add-on. I won't be showing you that today because I don't want to create confusion about what's free and what's not. But if you do want to hear about our text TRC, text reading and comprehension running record, reach out to our hotline. You can ask Krista questions in the Q&A box right now about it. That data drives classroom reports, instant groupings, teacher-led instruction for free, great leadership reports, aggregated and disaggregated data, data that you can download to your own system, send back to the state, 
when you need to. And we also offer optionally, I'm going to talk about later, um, an optional add-on for students working at their own pace on their own device in a game-like engaging world for instruction and a connected intervention. All in the same platform, all working at scale nationwide and across Texas. The heart of M-Class Texas Edition is our partnership with the University of Oregon. The gold standard of data that everybody respects, um, not that there aren't many other alternatives, including TPRI and Kia, for that kind of level of respect, but the heart is the Dibbles ETH Edition coming out of the University of Oregon. Many of you may know older versions of Dibbles. Dibbles 8 is fantastic because it's been validated for dyslexia. It's based on the most recent research and it captures diagnostic level data for all students, including your struggling readers and your readers who are not at risk or who may not be at risk, the ones who are at and above benchmark. For Spanish, we feature the University of Oregon's EDEL assessment for K3. So you have parity for English and Spanish. Between the two, you've got a comprehensive vision of all your screening measures that you'll want, all of the literacy and language domains required for kindergarten readiness, everything you'll want in your universal screening, your phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, and comprehension, English and Spanish, and in addition, uh, as you need both instructionally as for dyslexia, spelling, vocabulary, and listening comprehension, which were developed, validated, uh, uh, and researched fully by Amplify. So let's go a little bit deeper into that. So M-Class is always teacher-administered and digitally scored. What that means is a child is going to sit with a teacher or maybe an assessor, you may have a team that's doing this, one-on-one, -on -one. Think for a moment about your youngest children, a kindergartner, a first grader, how valuable they find that time uh, to be one-on-one -on -one with a teacher. Five to seven minutes for Dibbles itself, English. Spanish is about parallel. A few more minutes to do the additional uh, measures, a little bit less at kindergarten. Uh, the students are gonna actually produce sounds, and this is why teachers like this. It's going to be scored immediately by the teacher on a device, but what's going to happen is think about a child, a kindergartner, um, breaking down a word. The teacher will say the word, as we'll say, will he see, and it's, you'll see the student segmenting that word. No multiple choice. You want to see if a student can read an S, there's an S in front of them, and when they say S, you can see how their lips move. And if they're struggling with the word, or maybe it's the results of just different home languages and like, you'll know what to do instructionally in that moment qualitatively while you're capturing the quantitative data. It's a series of one minute measures. Each measure fully covers a foundational skill, both for the struggling readers and for the students at and above benchmark. And since it is a fixed form test, the teachers appreciate the transparency. They know everything that's going on. In Dibble's eighth, it's a series of one minute measures as you can see in the chart. Letter naming fluency, for example, is given beginning, middle, and end of year kinder, beginning, middle, and end of year first grade. You can see how nonsense word fluency for your letter sounds and your decoding starts at kinder, goes all the way up to three. Of course, if a child's really struggling with letter naming and phonemic segmentation, we're not asking them at kindergarten to do nonsense word fluency and word reading fluency as real words read out of context. In second grade, for example, if a child's a high flyer on their oral reading fluency, they're not gonna have to go back to their basic decoding and nonsense word fluency. So it's gonna save a lot of time, but for most of your students, you're gonna capture a huge amount of data. In the Spanish world, it's pretty simple. Sorry that I don't have all the measures spelled out, um, but uh, you can read about more about this at the University of Oregon's website. Just Google University of Oregon Dibbles and you'll see all of the Dibbles eight forms, all of the EDEL forms, same structure. Now to these, Amplify has added uh, a series of measures that we developed, researched, and validated. 
spelling and vocabulary, English and Spanish. These can be done group administered to save time, every child on their own device, or if you want for the youngest children for developmental appropriateness, a teacher can sit with a child and do the spelling where the teacher uses the keyboard, totally up to you. And then for listening comprehension, the oral language screener that is one-on-one, -on -one, teachers say a sentence, students say the sentence back, and as you can see, you score it, um, obviously correct or not, but full error patterns. This is an enormous amount of phonological processing involved, so this is part of why it's on your dyslexia screening requirements. Let's put that together. At the kindergarten level, you're seeing a vision of how all of the measures that are required in the literacy and, and the language domains play out with their measures in English and in Spanish. For a child who's really struggling, especially at phonemic awareness level, we have an optional inventory measures that can capture more diagnostic data in English and Spanish. Altogether, this will work for you for universal screening progress monitoring, the inventories, dyslexia screening in both language, and we'll see how this drives instruction. The Texas Handbook for Dyslexia, end of year kinder, there's the skills. Middle of the first year, first grade, there's the skills. The expectation is that there are observables. So having a one-to-one -one teacher administered screener at KN1 is a huge advantage in dyslexia screening. And then when we put that together into the crosswalk, you can see again that every required measure is being covered in both languages. Once again, by now you're probably asking Krista, will you get this recording? Will you get the deck? The answer of course is yes. If you have not been asking these questions, just look at the bottom of your screen. You'll see a Q&A icon. Send them over to Krista. Um, we'll see if anybody can stump her today. Now let's take a look. I'm gonna take a sip of water while you ask questions. So let's get into what this feels like to assess. So to set the stage, we talked about one-on-one. -on -one. The teacher has a device with a touch, ideally with a touch screen, iPads, Chromebooks with touch screens. We have a full list of technology that works. We do have some districts, including districts of Texas that use a laptop and a mouse. It works just fine. The student has in front of them, whatever they're gonna read from is printed in front of them. You can download this for free from within M class and print them on site. For sale, we do print and offer bound copies to keep it very simple for sale, but free, you can download these materials on your own. Remember, everything I've been talking about so far is free. Let's watch a video. So Karen is assessing Lee a uh, early first grader or beginning of year with his phonemic segmentation. Of course, since it's PSF, he doesn't have paper in front. She's gonna read a word. You can watch her screen on the lower left-hand corner. Um, we begin with a practice item for to keep fidelity. You'll notice, well, I'm gonna stop and narrate periodically. Here we go. The sounds in the word am are ah, mm. So Mr. Say, the little Pac-Man, tells Karen exactly what to say to Lee. Here are the instructions overall and what to say to Lee for the practice item and in the assessment. This supports teachers to assess with fidelity. Your turn. Tell me the sounds in the word am. Tell me any sounds you hear. Uh. Ah. Okay, here is your first word. Now, as we do this, you might want to watch Lee a little bit. If you're not used to teacher-administered assessment, um, watch the impact on the child. You may have noticed he was a little disconnected during the practice item. Watch how engaged he becomes during the assessment, and then we'll see what happens at the end. Four. Uh, er. Here. Er. Who? So here's the one minute timer, it's a one minute measure. It's counting up. Karen doesn't have to watch this because it'll flash yellow before the end. But for the most struggling readers, if they're stuck on one item in three seconds, you tell them to go on. So the result of that is in a minute, every child, every child 
can actually respond to a very wide range of items, and we'll see how M-Class analyzes a very granular reading pattern. Below it is the word she's saying, and the upcoming words, and the correct phonemes. She's using her finger to tap or draw exactly how he hits the phonemes or if he blends them together. And you'll notice that she taps occasionally on what would be the correct phoneme to mark it wrong. It turns red, double tap, self-correct, triple tap if she made a mistake. Ooh. Ooh. On. Uh. Mm. Wave. Ooh. Gets a little more a. complex. Mm. Both. Oh. Ball. Let's jump um, forward a little ooh. bit. You see, he on the on ball there, he blended. He didn't really segment. And here First. we are near the end. Flash is yellow. Stop. Right, every child does that every time. They really want to know how they did and to have a conversation. So it's stopped. When Karen touches the screen, it clears. She can correct any items that she needs to. Good job then either accept the results, or if there was a fire drill, she can invalidate it. And then instantly it scored. So Lee, who appeared very confident there, in fact, he is well below the benchmark for phonemic segmentation. He scored a 23, we can see the red there. As each of these gets filled in, eventually the overall risk score will be filled in, red, yellow, green, and blue for well above benchmark. And then they can have a conversation about how he did at any step along the way. In the middle of the year and the end of year, Karen will still see those results on her screen in real time. So as she finishes off the middle of the year assessment, they can have a conversation about how Lee has been successfully growing over the course of the year. Now, let's say this was Edel in Spanish. Same technique, same basic idea. It looks a little bit different but everything is otherwise pretty much the same. What about progress monitoring? Now this is really key. The research shows very consistently that regular progress monitoring is one of the um, key factors for student achievement and for students really moving from being at an at-risk status to eventually being able to read at grade level. Uh, sometimes, some systems, it could take a long time to do progress monitoring. You have to do that monthly with a whole class, 30 minutes or more, putting them all on a computer or the students who need. In the case of M class, what you do is you sit one-on-one -on -one with a child. You do exactly what I showed you. When you come down during progress monitoring, M class will tell you which one measure, sometimes occasionally two, usually one measure to do with that child. And in a minute and a half to two minutes, that child is back to their learning with very little interruption, and the teacher has collected all the data they need for a graph like this. If the teacher sits down and looks at the recommended measure and they want to do something different, maybe it's a first grade, a second grade student, oral reading fluency is recommended and they do it and they're curious about a first grade oral reading fluency passage, they can always override it and uh, go ahead and do another progress monitoring measure, you know, where if you've got a child that's recommending doing decoding, but you're really curious about their phonemic awareness, you know, go for it. But really, for your students who are below or well below benchmark, you're going to generally spend one and a half to two minutes progress monitoring and then getting rich graphs showing you how they're doing. Let's start taking a look at how this comes up in M class. So here we are with Mrs. Benson's first grade class. Again, it will look exactly the same for kindergarten of 15 students. She's just finished all of her benchmark assessments. And what you're probably thinking about is exactly what we're thinking about, which is this very tight tension for every teacher between having sufficient knowledge, transparency, and data to be able to analyze quickly and know what to do with your class as well as understand the needs of every child at the level of depth that you need to analyze, perhaps with a grade level team or perhaps in an IEP meeting. And at the same time, you want fast 
what do I do tomorrow with this child or in this class? So watch how that plays out in M class, Texas edition. This is free K2, what I am about to show you. So we start with a summary, 15 children have been assessed, about half are below and well below benchmark and about half are ahead and above. But if we look at the foundational skill of decoding, we could see that Mrs. Benson has three quarters of her students are running below the benchmark for their decoding. So let's investigate further. We come down to the class list. Now, there's not five different reports. We've designed this intentionally. You don't have to pull a report of which students need intervention. All you do is you look at your class list, sort it. Here are the children who are well below benchmark. Here are the children who are below benchmark at and above. Take a look at John Bell. He was running below benchmark on his Dibbles reading. So the school administered the extra um, assessments for dyslexia screening, vocabulary, spelling. In this case, you'll know we actually have a rapid automatized naming. You may know that that's a really well-researched screener for um, uh, dyslexia. If you want it, you're welcome to ask us for it for free. Uh, but in your Texas edition, it will have oral language screening here. In this case, John had come up red on the RAN, so there's a very discreet dyslexia flag, the screening flag, to say think a little bit more about John. Now let's go back for a second. Remember we had three quarters of the students who were reading below at decoding, so we sort there, here they are, and immediately Mrs. Benson detects that the decoding, we have a whole chunk of students who are below decoding, but that's not a surprise. They're below and well below for their phonemic awareness and letter sounds. Now notice, by the way, that for every teacher, they process information differently. So it's the word, the score against the goal, and the color code. Here is a group of students who are running behind on their decoding, but they have mastered their precursor skills. So we know what we would want to do with them. And then here are the high flyers that we want to keep them on track and enrich them. Let's go back and take a deeper dive. Remember I talked about transparency. So let's take a look at Emma Ashley. Here's her decoding. That's the transcript of her probe. We could see she blended the line the same way as we saw in the PSF for Tib and Rep. She sounded out, ha-ab. She's making mistakes on the uh, but she also didn't get very far. She's doing all right on the, on the letter sounds, but she's not getting a lot of them done in a minute, and that's why she's in the yellow. She's not blending too many of them. We can look at her letter names and see exactly where she's struggling, or her oral reading fluency, the past she read where she made a mistake, where she self-corrected. So you don't necessarily want to do this for every child, but think about the power of this when you want to know more about what's going on for Emma. Or for John, why is he well below benchmark? Here's his phonemic awareness, how he segmented words, and where he started getting stuck, where he could do the onset, but then blended the rhyme. So we can do this investigation because we have all of this data for every child. Go further down and get all of, obviously when you start with us, there won't be a lot of historical information, but the data travels with the child from class to class, grade to grade, school to school in your district. So imagine the power of a second grade teacher, or if you even chose to add on third grade, where not only can they go back and see the scores to first grade and kindergarten, they can always go down to see what the child was assessed with and analyze the probe. Now remember, as your teachers are using Dibbles data or Edel data, they get used to reading those transcripts very fast. So a second grade teacher can always see how their child did at first grade. A third grade teacher getting before, ready before start, if you chose to add it on, would be able to find out what happened before. But let's go back to the problem that we had said about speed. And here's the magic. So M class has gone ahead and um, for all students, taken the underlying probe, right? That transcript I showed you, it analyzed the error pattern. So it's not just telling you high level what foundational skills need work, it's actually gonna go ahead and analyze and notice that Emma is having trouble decoding, she's having trouble recoding 
when there's a consonant blend. It's analyzed that oral reading fluency passage and noticed which words she's making mistakes on. Here are activities you could do with Emma, but really think about teachers, um, beginning teachers, think about teachers who are coming back to this focus on phonics, who are saying, Emma has so many needs. What should I do first? Well, there it is. M class has a built-in learning progression. It's analyzed every probe, given you all the granular data far deeper than most systems are able to give you, and then come back, rolled it up into plain English about what Emma should work on next. Here's what John should work on next. Tammy is well above benchmark, but she also has what are her needs, blending skills and comprehension, activities for her. But we know that this is not how most teachers teach. Most teachers will teach and work with children in small groups. So M class has magically, through the power of technology, has gone ahead and taken every child in the class based upon their immediate needs and put each child into a group. Here's Emma's group working on phonemic awareness. And by the way, don't forget English and Spanish, English and Spanish, what they should do, what they need to work on, advice on pedagogy. This is English literacy, but here are considerations for your L's in the group. Um, how to think about reading English based upon their home language, the patterns of that group, and then I click it, and here is a teacher-led activity. Highly scripted, takes very little prep. If there are like word cards or picture cards, you just download it, pay, print it out, cut them up. If there aren't, you just keep this on your laptop while you're instructing that group. Um, it's suitable to be done by power professionals or by teachers with very little effort. These activities are 10 to 20 minute teacher-led activities for each group. Um, you could even send those home to parents, for example, uh, if, if you ever uh, need to. For the do-it-yourselfers, you can find all of the activities in our system. Say, go by decoding. I need a second grade level decoding activity. Here they are. We'll talk in just a bit about amplifier reading and intervention. Those are the, are the add-ons, but these are the free parts. Uh, in K2, this is all part of Tech M Class Texas Edition free diagnostic. We talked about how easy progress monitoring is. So there you have your class's progress monitoring. Sorry, let me sort that. And we could see that the struggling readers have been progress monitored. You get a quick chart over here for their trajectory. We call it an aim line. But we can look down at John. I showed you this graph. Let's put a pin for the moment on the fact that John was, in fact, doing well below benchmark. But he seems to be doing much better. He's above the trajectory for his phonemic segmentation. Something must have been going on. Maybe he had a really good intervention. Maybe they were using those great lessons. Uh, but we do want to wonder what's going on there. Uh, teachers have been able to set achievable and realistic goals. For every child, based upon their starting point, we could see against a national sample what growth rate you would need to be able to reach the expectations for grade level. And of course, if you're really well below benchmark and maybe you're not gonna get there in a semester, the teacher will know that and be able to set an appropriate goal. And then finally, at the end of the period from beginning of year to middle of year, um, I don't have middle of year data here, but you would see the outcomes. And the graphs could actually be plotted against the goal that you, the teacher, have set. I'm gonna take a glass of water. Uh, while you put into the chat box, please, in the chat box, tell us what you love or what you're fascinated by here. Give us some feedback. And in the Q&A box, ask Krista your questions. I hope you're all chatting and telling us what you like. Of course, if you hate some stuff, you're welcome to tell us that too. Um, and of course, please go stump Krista in the Q&A box. All right, let's go back to our story. So we've completely covered universal screening, progress monitoring, dyslexia screening, English and Spanish, classroom instruction reports, how I see my data, how I analyze my data, how I find out what every child needs, what I could do for them, how to group them, and what I would do with each group. What about the parents? 
They get letters in English and Spanish three times a year. For your kinder students, HB3 requires a letter after that BOI Kinder Ready Assessment. Here it is. But what's really nice about it, again, English and Spanish, and when you do EDEL, you'll get Spanish letters about Spanish, English letters about Spanish, or for M plus Dibbles, again, it's the same big idea. But these letters are in very parent-friendly language about how the child did, what it means, and then what you could do at home to support your child. Parents will also have a Home Connect portal with more activities. Once they know, help your child with phonological awareness, here is the parent side of even more things you could do at home or on the go. For example, learning how to decode by reading cereal boxes in the supermarket. And of course, activities that people you can do in Spanish as well. Now, I'm not showing you this because I want to start moving on to a few other things, but there's an entire suite of administrative reports for your reading coaches, your school principals, your district leaders. They can slice and dice, measure proficiency. How do we do across our district at beginning of year? What does our growth look like from beginning, middle, end of year? Look at schools, drill down to grades, to classrooms, down to the students. Which is the teacher? You know, here's a group of teach students who are doing well above benchmark on their decoding. Well, who are those teachers that we can invite to present for district level professional learning about what they're doing so successfully? How are we moving students from red to yellow to green, even to blue? Are our students who start the year at benchmark slipping back? And you can download all of that data for further analysis or to upload it into any system that you're using. You can download all of your raw data and upload it into any other system that you have in your district. So now, we've talked about a big picture of what's free. Let's talk about what's additional, but let's also talk about how to extend the, the reach of the teacher in the classroom. So just to summarize, what's included, we have all of the measures, K2, English and Spanish, including the dyslexia, the additional measures that are used for dyslexia, but also don't forget, spelling and vocabulary, you're gonna want that for instructional purposes as well. All of the student materials, remember the teacher is on a device. The students are reading from print. You can download that for free. We offer full support when you implement with us to help you roster and get everything online. Simple rostering process, it's all automatic. It's not clever, but it's something that our implementation people will set up with you once. They just get an output from their SIS, M class draws it in, takes about an hour to set it up, then it runs on its own. Uh, but also I wanna let you know that throughout the year, your teachers, your leaders, your coaches can call our support line it's not just tech support, I forgot my password. It's also, or where to click for here, or how do I administer the assessment? We have a specialized team that are all educators that can answer a teacher's question like, oh, students are red in this and they're yellow in that, and I'm not sure what that means, and how did this happen, and what do I want to do next to my classroom? They can ask a very sophisticated teacher questions, phone, email, chat. Free, online, self-paced training course for how you can learn how to do all of this on your own. Lots of practices in it, as well as what does the data mean? All of the dyslexia screening for K2 is free. What can you add on? Well, first of all, M class three through six. You might wanna think about the fact that uh, this doubles data and the UDEL data could be super useful in grade three before your STAR assessment. Um, it's great for a third grade teacher to have complete continuity of data, same assessment, same data. Remember, even at the K2 level, you're not changing platforms between kindergarten and grades one and two. You're getting total continuity. Why not think about saving the money and extend that into grade three? I know there's a lot of other needs at grade three as well, but this could be super useful to make sure your children are gonna be ready for STAR uh, on all those foundational literacy skills, progress monitoring, and, and the activities. If you want, 
bound printed assessment kits. So that way you don't have to print anything out at home. I'm sorry, in school. Um, no papers get lost, no must, no fuss. Um, those are very simple if you'd like to get those from us. Uh, we offer the online course completely for free. People will love it, but if you do want to do facilitated PD, we have an awesome team. I introduced Etty before, uh, but we've got a great team that could do this for you, um, eat either remotely uh, or in person. Sorry um, about that. There we go. Um, uh, we can add on a PD for you. Uh, just let us know. And again, uh, we can get you a crisis on this or email the hotline or ask Krista in the Q&A box. Uh, but you can do this uh, and learn everything for your teachers. This can also be done train the trainer because I'm sure many of you have your own um, reading coaches and other leaders that would love to get the face-to-face -face kind of work with our facilitators and then bring it back to the teachers who maybe they're using the online course for support, but then you have more on-site support. I'm not talking at great length about our running record, but I do want to let you know that you could add on TRC, text reading comprehension licenses, and our leveled book sets for assessment. This is available in English and in Spanish. And if you do do TRC in English and Spanish, you get a special biliteracy tab in M class that analyzes how students are reading these connected texts and comprehension in English and Spanish and offers guidance for biliteracy education. Um, call us if you want a demo or to learn more about that. We do offer math. I'm not going to talk about this. This is, again, this is an optional add-on. We offer math K3, but I want to stay focused on the reading because the big question is what else can you do in your classrooms to extend the reach of the teachers? Um, as we do this, remember, chat box, tell us what's fascinating you. What are you thinking about? What do you like or dislike? In the Q&A box, stump Krista. Let me find uh, my slides, take a sip of water, and let's talk about how do we extend the reach of the teacher. Remember, we've got those 10, minute, 10 20 minute activities for free, but students can really work on their own. And one of the things that we know about online platforms nationally and other places that districts have told us is that sometimes students get bored of working on their own. And also what sometimes happens is that the struggling readers are working on one thing. The advanced readers are working on something else. And when they talk to each other, they really feel the emotional pain of who's ahead and who's behind. So what we did was we built Amplifier Reading. So you can, again, this is an add-on if you'd like, would be M-Class Text Edition with Amplifier Reading. Students are placed in a game-like world. It's not a game, it's a game-like narrative. In KN1, students are introduced into the world of Bookerton, where their imagination is really able to run. They're introduced to their avatar or their pet, a curioso, and they practice in the world of Bookerton at their own pace in a completely adaptive uh, supplemental curriculum. We've designed these worlds so that the narratives and the games or the practices Focus on hardcore skills that are appropriate at every grade band. You can get this K through eight. The worlds that they're in focus on the emotional interests that are developmentally appropriate, going from imagination and curiosos to mystery, where an unusual woman visits Brookerton and they have to figure out who she is. They find out at the end of the game, at the end of the two years, that she's actually a librarian. By four through five, she's off in other multiple universes and they go on adventures with new characters that support them in close reading and of authentic texts in our e-reader. And then finally, the middle schoolers are in a world of rebellion, a dystopian universe where the robots have taken over and prevent the humans from reading. And in order to free the humans, students need to do close reading work. But at all of these levels, the way it works is students are given a quest of th that they have to achieve. And every child struggling in advance have the same quest. But inside that quest, 
each child will have a sequence of three activities or games that they need to do that are exactly at their reading level, lower or higher. Even off grade, they'll be in the game world and in the look and feel that's appropriate for them, but getting the lessons and the activities that are appropriate for them. And the result of that is I want you to really picture this. Those first graders, no matter who they are, they go out at recess and can talk about their adventures in Booker 10, whether they are the most struggling readers or the most advanced readers. The result of that is that it's completely engaging and is able to be built with reading experts on all of the skills as they move from the foundational skills out to comprehension and cross reading and beyond. With Amplify Reading, we've seen incredible results. In a study that we did, we've seen um, a phenomenal, say for example, at second grade, reduction in at-risk kindergartens, incredible gains above. We've seen a fantastic closing of the gap between the L's and the, um, and the uh, native English speakers. This has been so impactful in, in districts that have um, high levels of L's. We'd love to show you more uh, about this. Talk to us about Amplify Reading. Uh, it really works. It's 30 to 45 minutes a week. So we're really extending the reach of the teacher uh, beyond the classroom. It's suitable in school and at home. Teachers, meanwhile, receive complete data on exactly where each child is up to, how they are working relative to their Dibble scores, the amount of time they're speaking, they're using Amplify Reading, and then for every subskill, what Amplify Reading is telling the teacher about the skills progression that the child is, being, is, is moving through. Let me shift over. So that was Amplify Reading. So remember, now we've seen the teacher-led instruction, free, the optional add-on Amplify Reading, and now what about John Bell? If you remember, we looked at John Bell's graph, and we saw that he was above the aim line in phonemic segmentation. And we see this all the time with students, but it does not happen by accident. If you keep a student on the trajectory that they are on without added support, we know where that ends up happening. There's a lot that we could do with the supplemental activities uh, in, M excuse me, in M class, and you can use them in your intervention groups for free. But some of you are probably wondering, what else can I do? M class intervention is a connected, 30 minutes a day outside the core for tier two and tier three. It pulls in the M-class data. You do administer another measure or two to get even more diagnostic data. It forms small intervention groups that are highly homogenous and gives you a 10-day cycle of lessons. 30 minutes at any given moment working on two skills, highly programmed, very simple, multimodal, multi-sensory. Kids get up and they move around. Um, it's visual, it's audio, and it's small group. And it's very easy to be delivered by a teacher, an assistant teacher, a paraprofessional, or even a volunteer. You teach the students for 10 days, the kids practice, and then you progress monitor. Once you progress monitor, you get the next 10 days of lessons. Usually they're not regrouped, but it'll be appropriate for each group, new lessons, teach, and so on and so forth. At some point, students will even move from group to group to keep the groups homogenous. During the 10-day lessons, you'll notice that each day, here's a 10-day plan for one group, works on two skills at the same time interwoven to keep it interesting. Then on each day, you'll notice that you have a series of different activities jumping between or moving swiftly, sorry, smoothly between the different activities. And then at the end of the 10 days, you're gonna progress monitor and get the next set. So that's M-class intervention. To summarize this up, I hope you've been having lots of questions in the Q&A box. We'll take a few live, but uh, here we have it again. M-class Texas edition is your all-in-one comprehensive solution 
for assessment, intervention, and instruction. You've got instant data, complete transparency for the, your own data analysis, but also rapid grouping and instruction to meet the needs of both sets of teachers. All the leadership reports, excellent PD, completely included customer support. Much of it is completely free to you at K2 with continuity of data from K to one to two and a few lovely add-ons that we talked about today at grades three through six, add-on amplifier reading if you'd like, add-on add uh, M-class intervention, talk to us more about the TRC measure if you do balanced literacy. We do offer math. We've got a great toolkit here. I wanna thank you so much for this. For next steps, we're gonna take a few live questions right now. By now you're so excited Again, I don't mean to be facetious, but call us, ask us questions, sign up. We've got a full series of webinars to walk you through your choices, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Come to our website and check it out. We've got more questions answered here, more information about all of our programs, and there it is all on the top, FAQs, opt-in today, reach out to us, see what else we have to offer or look at our other webinars about how to opt in. We're doing a couple of math webinars next week. Tell us what you're thinking. So um, Mindy, has anybody stumped Krista? I don't think anyone has stumped Krista yet. However, we um, do have, have had a few questions come in. You did such a great job that we only have a few, but we had a couple of questions around PD free and um, the face-to-face -face at a fee. Can you just um, reiterate the difference in those two options? Uh, sure. The first thing to know is that you can do this completely for free in K2. Um, there's an online course. M-Class itself has, a deep, has an excellent embedded help system and a large number of training videos. In addition to that, M-Class Texas Edition will have beginning, I believe it's beginning July 1 or sometime in July, uh, certainly before school starts, uh, there will be a full connected set of modules, an online course that takes you A to Z. It takes a teacher about three hours to go through everything. I would recommend that you think also about how your teachers can practice together a little bit. Uh, maybe one teacher works as a teacher, somebody is a student or at home, you know, find a neighbor's child or ask your partner to be a child. Uh, and we, contain, we, in, we include lots of practice forms and recordings that teachers can use in the online course. People do this highly successfully, that's free. <coughs> now, if you would like to add on facilitated PD, which we know that so many districts do, we know lots of the value of teachers being face-to-face, -face, even via webinar face-to-face, with the facilitator to practice, go deep, um, and ask tons of questions. That's the paid PD. Um, and so uh, we are, um, uh, you can do that remotely if you'd like, or you could do that in person. We recommend doing that, um, uh, we really do that as a one day facilitated session. It includes all of the knowledge, all of what it means in the instruction, but also a lot of practice time. So it's an awesome option to add on. You can do that, train the trainer if you'd like. Um, Mindy, can I just um, mention a few things that I put into the chat box for folks in case they wanna grab them before they're done? Um, you can scroll up the chat box. I think I put the contact information in there a few times. Um, there is a white paper from the University of Oregon around um, how Dibbles itself was validated for screening for reading difficulties, including dyslexia. So you can find that at the chat box. That's up at 1112 when Alan was talking about dyslexia. Um, and then Alan mentioned, when Alan mentioned our reports, um, down at 1136, um, you can check out our reporting guide. Um, that would be just a reminder that's 1036 
Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. All I'm right. on East Coast time. Thank you, Mindy. <laughs> Showing up. Um, and then at 1039 for everybody in Texas, um, there's the schedule of the webinars. If you want to invite more of your colleagues or your um, other district leaders or principals, some of you have mentioned, please, there's that um, schedule there. And also, you can contact us to get um, other demos directly for a team of folks on your team, but we we have a ton of these scheduled um, over the next few weeks. So please um, share this information with your colleagues. And if you forget all of that, if you look back up at 10.06, there is our website that you can go to and access everything. And Alan shared that with you kind of at the beginning and then at the end at amplify.com slash mclass dash Texas. That is a great resource for you to continue to go back to um, because it will be updated as we um, as the weeks pass. I did notice that three of the districts in the chat were uh, talking about balanced literacy and wanting the TRCPs. Uh, text reading and comprehension is simply our name for a running record. It's all uh, on your iPad. It's wonderful and clear. And uh, please don't forget to ask about that. Alan, I'll let you close. Well, thank you, everybody. Krista, thank you for manning all the questions. Etchi, thank you for the TRC point. Mindy, for keeping us all on track. But most importantly, I'd just like to say as we close off, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Um, please invite your colleagues uh, to come. But thank you for the chats. Thank you for the questions, and thank you for allowing me, presumably, into your homes. So have a great day. Um, take care.